Jesus Christ, if you believe in, if you, if that's who you believe in, Jesus Christ, admittedly was not perfect when he was here on this earth. That opening video clip was from former CNN host Don Lemon. As absurd as that statement is to millions of us who are Christians, I do want to share the truth with those of you who are not Christian. Jesus was perfect. He had to be, otherwise we would have no hope. See, there needed to be a perfect sacrifice to give humanity a chance at a relationship with the creator of the universe. And Jesus was that perfect sacrifice. But why is there a need for a sacrifice? For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. When Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit God commanded them not to eat, sin entered the world. Now everyone that is born is initially separated from God because of our sins. And because of that separation, there needs to be a sacrifice to pay for those sins. Sin not only means separation from God, but it brings death. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. This death Paul is referring to here is a spiritual death. And in our physical death, if we go through life without accepting the free gift of God, which is Jesus, we will spend eternity away from Him in hell. Despite being born into this terrible predicament, is there any hope for us? But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. The amazing thing is, even though we were born into this world as sinners, God still loved us so much that He sent Jesus to take on that penalty of sin and die for us. We will never fully understand how great and awesome God's love is for us. He didn't have to send Jesus to die for us. He could have left us alone to die in our own sins, and everyone would have ended up spending forever in torment, darkness, and isolation completely away from God. Now, a question we all need to ask is, what must I do to be saved? If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. You first have to realize that you are someone who does not live up to God's holy standards, and that you need a Savior. Then when God reveals in your heart who Jesus is and what He has done for you, just ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Acknowledge that He is the Son of God that came into the world lived a perfect life, and died for your sins, was raised from the dead, and is preparing for his return. This is the way to salvation. It is not about reciting a prayer or saying a few churchy words. It is about faith and believing the truth the Bible teaches about Jesus. It is about accepting that free gift of eternal life that God offers every human. But you may say, but I do good things. I'm a good person. I should be able to go to heaven because I'm not evil. Understand this. Being good Doing good deeds will not save our souls. Why? Because it is not about what we can do. It is all about what Jesus did. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Salvation is a gift that God freely gives to all of us who believe in Jesus. There is no word or action that you can perform to earn salvation. If we could earn our salvation, then Jesus would not have needed to come and die for us. You may ask, why doesn't God just let everyone go to heaven? It's because he has given us free will. and We have to choose to accept what Jesus did for us in order to receive the gift of salvation. We would not want to be with someone who was forced to love us. We want to be with people who choose to love us. God is the same way. He wants us to freely choose him. But how can we really know that Jesus is truly who he says he is. I really believe it comes down to the resurrection. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. The entire significance of Jesus' resurrection was it proved he was the Son of God. Without the resurrection, Jesus would have just been another popular teacher who died, and nothing more than that. Also, without him rising from the dead, all of the promises he gave us in the Bible would not be valid. There were plenty of eyewitnesses to the fact that Jesus was alive after the cross, and many of these witnesses ended up losing their lives because of their faith in Jesus. Would they have continued to suffer persecution and ultimately be killed over a made-up story about Jesus being alive? I do not believe so. Being a Christian isn't about following religious rules. In fact, it's not even a religion. True Christianity is about having a personal relationship with the Savior of the universe. 
Jesus' perfect and sinless life, his death and his resurrection, is more than historical fact. It is the spiritual truth that opens the door to salvation and eternity with God if we simply choose to believe in him. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much to give us a way back to you. Please be with those who haven't believed in Jesus just yet. Bless them with the clarity to see the truth of who you are and how much you love them. For those who are Christians, who may be struggling with sin, doubts, and fears, please give them the strength to seek you wholeheartedly, repent if needed, and remain focused on you. For those Christians who aren't struggling, give them the boldness to share their faith to those in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, your kindness, and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.